ladies and gentlemen, this is Game of Trades, and this is going to be a technical analysis of the S&P 500. We saw another big red day on Friday yesterday. We're starting to see signs of a second wave spreading throughout the United States. Bears are starting to get their confidence back. Is this the beginning of another panic wave down like we saw in March? Are we going to go back down to retest the lows or is this just a correction working off the overbought conditions to go on higher and head on to all time highs? Now this video will be separated into three different parts. I'm going to first cover the bigger picture on the charts, tell you guys exactly what I'm watching for, what levels I'm looking at and potential trade setups I'm looking at. I'm going to discuss the rising number of new cases in certain states in the southern states and how that's going to have an impact on the markets, how that's already having an impact on the markets. And I think my personal take on this may actually surprise you. And the third part of the video will be discussing the shorter term picture on the charts, on the hourly charts, discussing potential trade setups that may be triggered in the beginning of the next week. Now, always remember that I am not a financial advisor and you should make your own trading decisions based on your own research. And always remember to hit the like button if you appreciate the work being put into this video. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. We have been talking about the markets being at a very big pivot point since this high right here. You can go back and watch my videos bear market rally or v-shape recovery and we talked about the fact right here that we were going to have a correction and how deep that correction will determine the next few weeks if not the next few months of trading in the stock market and so far we've had that correction we've had a few big red days and so we really are at that pivotal moment in the markets that's going to be deciding what's going to be happening and we're starting to get a few clues that might indicate the next few weeks of trading. Now, I posted a community post uh, this week discussing this trading range right here. We have a resistance level right here and a strong support level right here, this 295 support level. And on that post, I discuss that a trader can go long at support and short at resistance in this type of trading range when the market hasn't picked a direction yet. We had divergence on the hourly here, approaching support. We had a nice bounce trade. Here we hit resistance. We had three taps of resistance and then a rejection. And now we're heading back to that support level. Now, in the last video, we talked about a potential market melt up move if we start breaking above this level. If that scenario is put into play, you can go and check out the video if you haven't seen it to, to understand the reasoning behind such a potential scenario but i do maintain that if we break above this level we are very likely to see all-time highs if not much higher highs but for now let's trade the chart that is in front of us we've recently had a bearish crossover on the macd and so far we're still trending down on that macd so the momentum has clearly shifted from an upwards momentum to a downwards momentum and you can see on the chart where we have these crossovers, they're pretty significant inflection points on the markets. We had one here, which marked the beginning of the big, big rally we saw over the past few months. We had a crossover here that marked the peak back here in February. Typically, investors do not try and fight momentum, but are much more likely to step in when the momentum has waned down. And that's exactly what happened here. We were overextended. We had that bearish crossover and the bears stepped in. And now we're starting to see some sort of a downtrend so far. Now we are coming back to that 295 support level, which is very important. We talked about it many times during this sideways trading range. It also corresponded to the 61.8 Fib level. I'm going to show you quickly from the highs here to the lows. You can see this level, this 295 level coincides perfectly with this Fib level, which is very significant. 
So when I'm talking about the pivot point in the markets, what I'm really referring to is this level. If this level holds, the bulls are still safe. So going long above this level is a very good idea if you think the markets can go higher. If we start breaking below this level, all of a sudden things are a lot more bearish. We're starting to make lower lows that would put in a lower low compared to this low. And that would mean that the selling pressure is sufficient to break a very significant level. And that would make this breakout a false breakout. And you can also go back on my videos. I think I have one called false breakout out of this level where we were starting to break out. And I discussed the fact that if we do break out and then come back below this level, that would trigger much more selling to the downside. And the next target would likely be that two to 800 level with a support level in between at the 285 level right there. And as a trade setup, if you're trading that break of that support level right here, all the way to that 2800 level, that would be a nice 5% profit. So it's a nice little trade setup. And I know a lot of people are calling for the markets to go down to correct to that level before heading on higher. And that may be a reason for why that may not happen. But of course, only time will tell until this level has been broken until this 295 level has broken. The bulls are still in control. I'm going to clear this chart a little bit. And you can see we've been making higher lows all the way through this uptrend. And this is just another higher low contributing to the uptrend. And this is why this level is so significant because if the price starts to break below that, that would make a lower low and begin potentially a downtrend lower. And if that's confusing for you, you can take a look at the MACD. I use that a lot to determine trends. The zero line is very important on this momentum indicator. If the MACD or the blue line on the MACD is above the zero line, that means that we're in an uptrend. So, so far we're still in an uptrend and we're coming down to backtest that zero line. And this zero line often acts as support when tested from above or resistance when tested from below. And I'm going to show you a few examples. But in that scenario, if we have a little bit more downside, come back to that 295 level and then bounce, that would just be a successful backtest of that zero line and continue the uptrend. And you can see that's been happening many, many times over the past few years. This is a backtest of the zero line. We overshot it right here. Nothing is perfect in technical analysis. This was a almost perfect backtest of the zero line. Here we also had a backtest uh, from below when we were before we had that flash crash uh, right here in 2018. But again, if we start breaking below this level, the blue line would be below that zero line and that would definitely trigger a trade down to the 2800 level right here. Now, before I cover the shorter time frame, I'm going to discuss the rising number of new cases we had in certain states. We're going to take a look at Texas. Texas is also seeing a huge, huge rise in the number of cases over the past couple of weeks. And this is where things really do get interesting because you have to remember that the markets react to what the future brings. And so if we take a look at New York, for example, we're going to take a look at the cases in New York. You can see that the peak number of cases in New York was right here. This was the second or third of April where New York had a record 10,000 cases in a single day. And so if we compare that to where the markets were on the second or third of April, we can go back to the S&P 500. This was the same moment on the S&P 500, the second and third of April right here. So the peak number of cases in New York was the beginning of a big, big rally in the stock market afterwards. And that is because the markets look forward to what is going to be happening and not what has already happened. And so when the markets see the number of cases gradually continue to lower down, well, the markets go up. And so if we compare that to what's happening in Texas, Texas started seeing all time highs in the number of new cases right here. This was the June 
10th. And so if you compare that to what's been happening in the markets, June 10th corresponds to this high right here. So in some shape or form, this correction corresponds to the markets pricing in the number of rising cases in Texas, Arizona, and Florida. But as soon as the number of cases peak, we're going to have good news week over week with lowering number of cases. And so of course I am no health expert on infectious disease, so it's difficult to say when the numbers will start dropping off again but i do think it is safe to say that we will see a drop off in the number of cases sometime soon and so markets will start seeing that as good news and could potentially start to fuel some moves up now of course this is the best case scenario for the markets right now if the states start to decide to have a lockdown close down shops close down parts of the economy that will obviously have a huge impact on the markets and we will likely see much lower lows very rapidly if state starts closing down that's why you need to watch those important levels and trade according to them now I want to take a look at the hourly chart there are a few things to look at that are going to give us clues as to what's going to be happening in the beginning of the next week now the first thing you can do is put a downtrend line here this is this only has two points so far but this is very likely going to be something that's going to come into play in the coming days and you can see this is the 295 support level where we had multiple reactions we had that breakout right here so this is a very significant level and what's interesting about this chart is that if we start heading lower potentially starting to get towards that 295 level we're going to have a lower low right here but that's going to have divergence because the price will be making a lower low while the MACD will be making a higher low and when you have that type of trade set up at very strong support, that is absolutely an objective time to buy on a buy signal. So that's where this trend line comes in. If we start bouncing off of this level, out of this trend line, that would likely trigger a nice move up to this resistance level and potentially even higher if the markets want to continue on higher. I want to make a quick comment on what I would think if the markets start breaking down below this 295 level. That would be very bearish for me. When you get this kind of divergence on an uptrend and you're at this type of support level, but the markets decide to burn through the divergence and burn through the level, that indicates that the markets have a lot of selling pressure and are willing to go much further down, very likely down to that 2800 level again. So those are the main things to watch out for on the charts. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't hesitate to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. In the meantime, good luck on your trading and see you next time.